I'm working on someone right now as we talk. <laughs> so hello and welcome. Good evening. Happy Monday. My name is Sarah Shabbat. For those that don't know me, this is the Candy Crew Team Training. And I know that it's exciting because we kind of have two different things going on right now. Some of our team is physically in Arizona at an overview right now with um, Sergi himself and Travis and Summer and a couple of other people are over there as well. Um, and then we have I'm really excited for this training tonight. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to just be on here with him. Um, Kari Thompson, I've asked for him to join us tonight. I absolutely adore Kari. He's so much fun to work with. He's such a great help to myself, my team. I just can't thank you enough and express my gratitude to you, Kari and Jenny. And thank you so much just for everything you've done. And for those of you that don't know, none of us would be here if it wasn't for Kari. Kari is the man who started it all, the one who introduced us to Travis, and then Travis introduced it to myself. And from there, we now have a team of almost 700. So I'm really excited. So Kari, I know you're going to focus on how we achieve the ranks of managing director and corporate director tonight. So I'm not going to talk anymore. I'm going to give you the mic and mute myself. So Kari, please take it away. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for the invitation to join you this evening. I always get up for these presentations. Um, my goal is to give you information that will be helpful for you to build your business and most importantly, to reach your goals, which is really the, the emphasis for being here. As Sarah mentioned, there's a big event tonight in Arizona. Uh, there's going to be an event on June the 10th in a couple of days in New York. I will be there with Sergey and the team over there. We've got July the 24th. We are mentioning that earlier. Uh, we've already sold 70 tickets for that event. And um, we think we're going to put about 200 people in that room. So Ohio the 20, uh, excuse me, July the 24th in Ohio. And also we're going to be doing one in Honolulu. I'll have the announcement for that within a couple of days. So I'm looking forward to being out in the islands. That's where I'm from. Love to go back. But I'm enjoying being here with you guys tonight. So Sarah gave me a topic. I said, Sarah, what do you want me to train on? She gave it to me. And I'm going to throw a few props to Sarah's way. I absolutely love working with her. I don't know if you guys know this, but Sarah is a top recruiter in our company. Um, she... And her husband were the top recruiters, I think, for one or two months. I can't remember. And when they first came on board, they got it moving. And it was their action that really launched the whole thing. So, yeah, I said a few things, but they're the ones that really got to work and plowed ahead. So thank you. And you go down, Sarah, in history of really helping the U.S. launch. So thank you for that. I love I, it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Tonight I have a presentation Um I hope that you'll be able to glean from it some important things. I'm going to go ahead and put it into presentation mode so we can see the whole screen. And again, if, you, um, if you're on, you should be able to see these slides. So let's just get forward. So the title tonight, if I can advance my screen. Oh, by the way, I'm the USA Launch Coordinator. That's my official title, um, but I'm really a distributor. Um, that's what I do. That's what I love. And if I could choose between being a corporate guy and being a distributor, I would probably be a corporate guy in most companies because you can get great overrides on the whole company if it's a good company. But with this company, I really wanted to be a distributor. When I saw the competition plan, the products and the opportunity, I'd never seen anything quite like it. I got really excited. I really made a conscious decision. I told Sergey, I want to be in the field. That's where I'm going to be. If you want to work together, let's do it. And thank goodness it, it worked out. So I'm really proud of the um, track record that we've been able to produce. So tonight, the topic is how to achieve the rank of managing director and corporate director. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to focus on both. I'm going to actually focus on the higher rank, which is corporate director. The reason I'm going to focus on corporate director is this is the base not base, but it is the leadership rank that has the most importance in our company. If you can achieve corporate director, you in theory and through actions should be able to help other people achieve it because you've already achieved it. So corporate director is a higher rank than managing director. The requirements are higher. I'm just gonna say that, but the rewards are much greater. And if you can hit corporate director, obviously you have already hit managing director. So let's dive right into it. I have a picture of Sergey here. <clears throat> I love this picture. Why? I remember when I got my Indian motorcycle 
and I posted it on Instagram and Sergey said, that's a cool picture. I like that. And then like two minutes later, he had a picture of him in this Ferrari. And I'm like, you're the guy, Sergey. Sergey wants people to be excited. He wants people to love his company, but he wants to help people. I was talking to Dr. Aaron and Garth today um, about what had happened in the Las Vegas event. And what they were saying was that we got to meet Sergey for the very first time. What a great guy he is. What a great personality. He actually hugged each of them, which you don't see owners do, by the way, and presented them their pins and told them how important they were to his company. And this is Sergey. This is the person I've grown to know, respect, and love um, as a great leader. And so I want to tell you that Sergey wants each and every one of you to achieve the highest ranks. Why? Because it's, it's going to yield a much better outcome. In fact, Here's an example that I love to, to share. If people ask me, what is a rank? And I've always said this, rank is a mechanism that allows you to pull more money out of the compensation plan. So the higher your rank, the more money you can pull out. And the example that I like to use is the example of the conveyor belt. So in this picture, there's money coming down the conveyor belt, but you have a really big problem. The problem is, is you can't reach all the money you can only take off the top 20s because your arms are only so long. Wouldn't that be frustrating? Like if you had a dream that you are above all this money and you could only peel off that top 20. That's all you could do. It'd be frustrating, right? The higher your rank, the more money you can pull out of the compound. So imagine that for every rank that you progressed, your reach got a half inch longer. So now you're a higher rank, you can pull out three $20 bills off every stack. And finally, at the highest rank, you could pull maybe $20 bills or the whole stack of money. So that's why an example that was shown to me years ago about rank and why it matters. So imagine a higher rank gives you longer arms so you can reach down into the comp and pull out as much money as you possibly can. So that's the way that I like to think about it. And I think that's the way that we should kind of think about this. Now we have status in our company. Status is very important, but I'm here to tell you, rank is more important in the long run than status. It's great to get in as a diamond or a VIP or a mentor, get in there and you have a higher payout and the group bonus, but over a period of time, rank is going to be king. So. That's where we're gonna talk about achieving corporate director. Now, there's some core requirements for tonight's Zoom. So it's like going to college, right? You go to college and you realize, man, I'm in the wrong class because I haven't hit these core requirements to be in this class. If you meet these three criterion, you should probably be on tonight's call. And I'm going to say this, if you haven't met these three criterion, you probably shouldn't be on tonight's call because you haven't made a commitment and you haven't made a decision. So what are the core requirements? Number one, I'm going to assume that everybody on this call has enrolled as an associate. Number two, I'm going to assume that everybody <coughs> on this call has purchased inventory by purchasing a $200 go kit or higher. And number three, I'm going to assume that everybody on this call has enrolled a minimum of two people and put them one on the left and one on the right hand side. Why? Because without step three, you can't get paid. So if you've met this requirement, great. You're in the right place tonight with us. If you haven't met this requirement yet, you might not be in the right place tonight. You might need to make a decision and decide if this is something that you're going to do or not going to do. And either way, it's okay. But remember, Things don't change unless you change. And if your life is not where it needs to be, your finances aren't where they need to be, you've got to make a decision. Um, the last thing I'm going to say about it is the reason why most people fail in life is because they can't make a decision. So make a decision. These are the requirements. So with that being said, we're going to move forward. All right. Technically, what does it take to be a corporate director? I'm going to read you these requirements. It is this easy that I'm going, to go, I'm going to go over them with you. So we all have a clear understanding. Then we're going to kind of talk about how to get there. So to become a corporate director, you need monthly activity or an auto ship 
of at least 140 PV. That's number one. We'll go over that. Also, you're going to need at least 12,500 PV in your pay lane or pay lanes, one or more. And we'll go over that as well. And finally, to be a corporate director, you need four managing directors. Okay, so we've kind of laid that out. And if you read through this chart, and I always invite people to go to this chart, it's in the compensation plan PowerPoint. This is the key to rank. You can see the lower requirements are 40 PV. Why? Because when people first come into the company, they're probably not making a ton of money. So there's a lower requirement for them to be qualified at promoter, associate manager, and senior manager. You can see at director, there's a higher requirement for your monthly activity. Remember, you're not just paying a, a like a, a dues. You're not paying like a um, union due or something. You're actually buying product. You're getting product in the mail. So you're getting value, but you're also remaining qualified. Senior director, 80 PV. And you can see that the higher your rank is, the more the monthly requirement is. The beautiful thing about this comp plan is at a very early level, people can afford it. And even at 300 PV, by the time you're a premier director, nobody's complaining about 300 PV. Why? Because you're sampling more and more products, sending more things out, handing things out to neighbors, selling product from your home, from the back of your, tr your tr trunk, whatever, you, whatever the case. Okay, so I've gone over these requirements. You see the volume, you see the amount of, on the right-hand side, number of personally qualified sponsored. This is why in this business, it's really important that you don't give away personal enrollments. In other words, if you've got somebody and you're, you're going to enroll them, that you don't give that person to somebody just because you're doing them a favor. The only time you're going to do this is that that person is going to work with them and, and grow that person's business with them. Otherwise, you keep those personal enrollments and there are exceptions. I'll talk about that in just a few minutes. So corporate directors, um, <coughs> it is the basis for all of the comp plan for leadership. And let's jump into this next slide. Okay, first requirement we talked about was a monthly PV of 140. I'm gonna make this really quick. You all have access to your back office. If you take a look and you're purchasing products, you'll see two figures here. The first one is the dollar amount. So if you're in the US or Canada, or maybe Australia, you're gonna see a dollar amount. Under that is the assigned PV, right? The amount of points, uh, point volume for each of those products. So remember, when you're qualifying uh, for 140 PV, which is your first requirement for corporate director, make sure that the PV adds up to 140. When you scroll down before you get out of your shopping cart, there'll be a total. Make sure that it is at least 140 PV. Next thing, number two, it says you're gonna need to have 12,500 um, point, points or point volumes in your pay lane or pay lanes. So in order to kind of illustrate this point, I'm going to get my little pen out because I think it's the best way to do it. In this scenario, you can see that this is you right here. Okay, so when you sign on to the company, you go into your um, commissions, into your um, your tree, your tree view, you're going to see your spot and you have two blank spots below you. You're obviously going to enroll people in either left or right. It's really simple when you begin. And basically how it works is everybody that comes in with one of the go kits, every go kit is assigned a PV value or point value, okay? So for instance, a diamond is 1200 PV, uh, VIP is 720 PV. And you can see on this side, my left lane, I've got a bunch of people, right? On my right lane, I've got a bunch of people. Now, remember the requirement is I have to have a minimum of 12,500 uh, 12, point value on my pay lane. So which of these is my pay lane? So if you've just left, you're correct. The reason why my left leg is my pay lane is because it's my lesser leg. So this side has less volume than this side. And this first or this slide in front of you, to me will represent one week of work. So at the end of every single week, your back office, the, the computer or the system will take a screenshot of your tree. It'll look at the numbers and it'll figure out how much volumes on each side, right? Of your, either of your two lanes. 
and it'll calculate that volume. So in this particular picture, <clears throat> my right lane is has 15,000 PV. So this is called my power lane. Why? The larger of the two lanes is always your power lane. If, for example, my left lane, I had some really great activity going on the following week, and I had a lot of people sign up, especially if they came in with the bigger go kits, my pay lane will probably move to my left lane. Now my right lane will become my pay lane. Excuse me, my power lane will move to my left lane and it'll switch over, okay? So pay lanes and power lanes can flop depending on what's happening in real time on, in your team. So the greater is always the power, the lesser is always the pay. So in this case, I need to have a minimum of 12,500 PV. If you look at my left lane, right? I've got 12,500 PV. I didn't add all these numbers up, so I'm just kind of giving you some ideas. But my right lane, I have, do I have a minimum of 12,500 PV? The answer is yes. I actually have 15, so I'm good. So the easiest way the, the computer figures you out is it looks to make sure that the minimum of both of your legs is 12,5. And they're never the same volume, point volume. It's rare that one will be identical to the other, okay? It just, I haven't seen it happen. So the computer looks at the lesser leg and says, okay, on my lesser leg, I've got 12.5 in PV. On my strong leg, I've got 15,000 in PV. Um, this person is qualified. The second requirement's filled that they have a minimum of 12.5 in, um, in their pay lane. Now, keep in mind that you can open more lanes down the road, and there's a requirement for that. So in this case, number two, we go back to number one, my monthly PV, I've got 140. Great. I put out my activity or my auto ship. Number two, I've got a minimum of 12.5 in my pay lane, so that's good. And I wanted to see, share, uh, share with you a screenshot. <coughs> this is what it looks like as you begin to fill your lanes out. Um, so this is actually my back office. You can see that I've got one, two, three, four, five, six lanes being filled out right now, right? So two of them is where I started. But at a certain point, national director and above, I said to the company, hey, um, I'm already doing good on these legs. Can I add another leg? And then can I add another? I got another leader. So you're, you have the flexibility at some certain point to add more lanes. And the reason I'm showing this is remember, you need that volume in your pay lane or pay lane. So your, your power lane, the biggest, the biggest of all the lanes is your reference for your power leg. But if you have a second leg, which we all do, that needs to be 12.5 or the 12.5 could be a total of your other pay lanes all combining to at least 12.5 or above. Does that make sense? So I'm trying to get at is if I have, this is my power leg right here. Let's say that is, and this is my pay leg right here, right? But if I had only, let's say, 5,000 PV in my pay leg that week, but I had 2,000 here, and I had 3,000 in this one, so it's at seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, um, it's already over, and I had 2,000 here. I had 12,000, actually make that 3,000. I had 13,000 now. Now I have 13,000 in my pay lanes. So this is separate. This is my main one, my power lanes, my biggest lane or biggest leg, if you will. But I can count all the volume from these other lanes. It just has a total 1,200 personal volume points or greater. This is the really cool thing about this comp plan. Now, most people building today have two lanes and that's the way it should be until your lanes are really strong and everybody's working together and getting help. Then as you go on, you can start adding more lanes. Now, personally, I wish I hadn't added some of the lanes that I did, but we're all learning how this comp plan works. So I hope that was helpful. Number three um, requirement is you need to have four managing directors. We call this structure. So there's a volume requirement. We went over the volume required in your pay lanes, right? Now we need to have four managing directors. So we go, okay, what is a managing director? Well, a managing director, if you go back to this screen, a managing director has needs to have 100 PV, a monthly activity, 
and 5,000 in their pay lane or combination of their pay lanes outside of the power lane and two directors. So if you go to this screen here, I've kind of mentioned it as well, 5,000 in pay lane and two directors. And if, and if you say, well, what's a director? Well, a director needs to have 60 in point volume, personal activity or auto ship, and 1,000 in their pay lane or pay lanes total outside of the power lane. Does that make sense? So I'm kind of going through methodically the three requirements on this chart to get to corporate director. So I hope, I hope that was helpful and that you guys all use this chart as a reference. It really makes things really simple and easy to understand. Now, let's begin with the second half of our training. When we talk about hitting corporate director, one of the most important things to do is to pick a date. And you need to set a realistic date. I don't like when people come in and they say, I'm gonna hit managing director next week. Why? Because if they can do it, great, but most people can't hit it in a week and then they feel like a failure and they beat themselves up and tell themselves they can't do the business. So be kind to yourself, look at your schedule, look at your work schedule, look at your family time, look at your recreation, recreational side, and look at time that you can allot to do the business. If you can only put in four to six hours a week, you might make it a three or four month goal to be a corporate director or a six month goal to be a corporate director. Only you know what your schedule is. So pick a date, but keep in mind all of the commitments that you have. Children, that's a huge commitment. Um, if you're going on vacation for a month, you might wanna give yourself an extra month but pick a date and commit to the date, but pick a date that works. The beautiful thing about having a date, and I've talked about this over and over, it's called horizon theory. The theory is if you put a person in the middle of a desert and you tell them to walk toward the sun, they're gonna probably give up in like two or three miles. But if you point to a tree 10 miles away and say, walk to that tree, they're going to walk to the tree. Why? Because they can see the goal in sight. Becoming corporate director or hitting any rank requires that same mindset. You have to have a focus. The date would be your theoretical tree and you have to drive toward that. And every day you've got to look at your calendar and see what actions you need to take in order to hit that. So for instance, what I would do is I would look at the ranks and I'd go, okay, in my first week, yeah, I can become a promoter because I just signed up and there's no volume in my pay leg requirements, pay lanes. So you can become a, pr a promoter and associate. I don't know why there are two ranks. They're gonna probably get rid of one, the promoter rank will probably go away because there's really nothing there. But I can become an associate to today or tomorrow. Easy if you just enroll. A manager, you might say, okay, well give me a week and I'll be a manager. I'm gonna get one left, one right, right? And I have a total of 250 PV in my pay lanes lane or pay lanes. And you can see as you progress to this chart that you can make goals based on this number. And I'm gonna show you a couple of examples that might help with that. Okay, number two, I like to, what I call backward engineer the qualifying process. Meaning that when I look at achieving a rank, it's two, you have to have a goal. You know, there's saying, we've all heard if you wanna eat an elephant, it's one bite at a time. The same with ranks. You got to be able to look at the rank um, qualification. You've got to have a strategy to attack it, to be able to hit it. You just can't say, I'm going to work hard every day. You've got to actually lay it out and look at what you need to do on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis to hit the rank. So in this example, uh, I'm going to give you a one month example, meaning that if you had a month to do it, right, to hit corporate director, you'd have to take this action. And it's not a realistic, but it's something that I hope you guys can kind of grab on to, to kind of see how the backward engineering process looks like. So let's take into consider these PVs that come with the go kits. Associate, if you sign up in associates, 80 PV, builder 160, mentor 240, VIP 720, and diamond 1200. These are the point volumes associated with each go kit. So I'm going to read this on the bottom. So if 12,500 PV in pay lanes is required for corporate director, 
you need a total minimum of 25,000 PV in your legs. It has to be at least 25,000 PV. Why? Because each leg, remember, each leg, the, the pay lane has to have at least 12.5. Half of it has to be in the pay lane or pay lanes. The other half has to be 12.5 or greater because that's your power leg. So does that make sense? So it's a total, both lanes combined, 25,000 PV. Now, does that sound overwhelming? Yeah, especially if you're new to this business. 25,000 can seem really intimidating, but remember, we talked about how do you eat an elephant? You do a little bit at a time. So let's go through some examples. Now, if I wanted to tackle 25,000 PV, and let's say, just for examples, you're going to do it in one month. This is the only way to really qualify this training, right? To make it kind of black and white. If I was to sign up 313 associates at 80 PV and place them as even as I can on both legs, I could probably hit corporate director. Or if I got 156 builders, go kit builders, right? I could hit corporate director, but at 240 PV, I could get 104 mentors, mentor go kit sold, right? 104 is better than 313. Or what if I got 35 VIP go kit sold? 720 PV a piece, that's more doable than trying to get 313 people. Or what if I had 21 diamonds? Because 21 times 1,200 is over 25,000, right? So do you see how I'm kind of breaking up these numbers and say, and I'm saying to myself, gosh, if I could get, you know, maybe 25% of my signups that are diamonds, the other 25% VIPs, the other 25% mentors, the other 25% will come in as builders, I could probably calculate what I would need to do over that three month period of time. Does that make sense? And while these numbers are overwhelming, this is actually a little crazy because anybody who does this <laughs> will probably end up in a divorce <laughs> or they'd lose the respect of their family or friends and they wouldn't have a life because this is insane to build this way, right? Nobody does it this way. So the good news is um, we're not crazy. Um, Instead of doing all that and going after 21 diamonds, why not just enroll four people, help them achieve managing director and teach those four people to duplicate? It is that simple. It's not easy when you break it down. Now you might say, okay, well, what's a managing director? If you're saying, Kari, I can be really huge and successful in APL Go by enrolling four people and helping them become managing directors, you might need to enroll 20 people to find your four managing directors, right? But this is the beauty of our business, <clears throat> helping people achieve their goals. So you don't have to do all the work yourself. This is where you have leverage come in. This is why we don't tell people in corporate America, this is how corporate America works. If you want a promotion, you gotta hit your sales numbers, right? Every month, you gotta hit your sales num numbers. If you're working in a call center, if you're working on a, a car lot, if you're working selling insurance, real estate, whatever the case, hit your numbers. This is what the rest of the world does. They have to work like dogs <laughs> to hit their goals, to hit 25,000 in PV. There are a lot of people selling a lot more of that in real estate, that every month that's their quota. Every month their quota is to sell $25,000 worth of Omaha steaks, whatever the case might be. That's not what we do here because we're not crazy and because we understand leverage. We'd rather enroll four people and help them hit managing director. And how, what is a managing director? Four people who have 100 PV in personal activity. Every month they're getting three, four boxes of product right? Two or three, four boxes of product. They each have 
5,000 or more in their pay lane or pay legs and they have two directors. And what's a director? Somebody with 60 PV and 1,000 and their pay lane or pay lanes. So do you guys see where I'm going with that? The beauty of our business, the reason why people think we're crazy for doing this, but we know that everybody else is really crazy. It's not us, right? That's how I feel when I look at what corporate America is teaching. So what do you do? I don't want to take too much time tonight, but you've got to make your list. And I've learned over the years not to judge people. Why? Because a lot of people that I thought were going to do really great kind of broke my heart and didn't do anything. And I realized that I can't control who I thought they were or what I thought their commitment would be. I have to be able to say next and move on to the next person. You've got to be able to do that and you can't take things personally. So what I do is I make a list and for me, I listen for inspiration. Now that might sound a little corny. I don't care. That's what I do. I listen for names that come to me in the night or during the day and I write them down. And sometimes I'm wrong, but sometimes I'm right. And more often I've heard people say, you know what's funny thing you called me. I guarantee you every leader on this call has had this experience. It's a funny thing you called me because I was really racking my brain to figure out how I was going to get out of post COVID, how I was going to make a car payment, how I was going to be able to pay for my son's education. And you're calling me. Interesting. These things happen. Now, when I make a list, I sort people. I don't judge people. So I want to make a distinction there. I'm not here to judge people, but I sort people. What do I mean by that? I look at influencers. I look at people who have the most influence. And if there's a group of people that know each other, and I've said this over and over, <clears throat> I don't have to sponsor all of them. This is the one exception I will make with giving up sponsorships. If I know five people and my best friend knows those five people as well, and my best friend's a worker and will do the work, I'll tell my best friend, if you don't get them, I will. So go get them. Or I'm gonna, I'm gonna go after them myself. But I give that person the opportunity. Why? Because I want four managing directors. Remember, I don't want, was it 21? I don't want 21 diamonds. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want to recruit 313 people to be associates, right? No life. Oh my goodness. I want four people who are going to be managing directors. That's all I care about. That's why I would give up personal enrollment to people that I know, like, and trust if they know the same people. So I sort my list. I'm going to mention this too. If you have a list <clears throat> and there are people on it who have said no, I want you to give yourself permission to let them go. It's powerful. Um, years ago, I was reading a book from a Japanese philosopher, and she said that she believed in emptying your closet. And this is something that's really big for me. So her theory was that if you go empty your clothes closet of all the crap you never wore or haven't worn for a long time, for me, it was cowboy boots and vests. My wife hates me, hates when I wear cowboy boots for whatever reason. And she doesn't like all my vests from the 80s. So she went and threw them out from my closet. Well, I took it one step further after I read about this gal, this Japanese philosopher. She said, if you want new things in life, you've got to be able to get rid of the old. So I went into my closet and I found jeans that I had worn in college. I found stupid stuff that I wore at one point. I don't know why I purchased some of those items. In fact, I felt embarrassed at some of the stuff I had worn over the years, but I got rid of it, right? So I ended up taking about three-fourths of all my stuff to the Goodwill store. And guess what happened? Over the next two months, new clothing came into my life. I started noticing things. I started putting aside money and purchasing new things. This will happen with your friends if you remember to do this. If there's somebody in there that said no to you and they're giving you bad energy, get them off your list. Wish them the best and let new people come into your life. It's powerful. Because that's the way things work. Some people go out, new people come in. So why would you want to recirculate the same old people? I've done this. 
but he's a really good leader. If I just got him in, he could bring in a big team. It doesn't matter. You've got to let them go. doesn't mean forever. You can let them go for six months, but don't make it all about them. That's just my advice. Okay. I'm going to move on. Um, when you're doing enrolling or going after new associates to bring them in, I'm talking about the business, not as customers, because this is a business training. You will not bat a thousand percent. I said a hundred, it's actually a thousand percent for baseball, but I'll take 10 to 20 all day, all day long. I'll take 10 to 20 conversion rate all day long. I'll make a million dollars in this business by taking 10 to 20% of people coming on board and enrolling. And of all those people, who am I looking for? I'm looking for four people to hit managing director. So as I said on a call this morning, I got to talk to one of our great associates who's being, she was down because she hasn't been having success. And I said, you know what? I go through this as well. It's normal. Yeah, I strike out. Yeah, I talk to leaders and they laugh at me, right? Or yeah, I talk to family members and they think I'm a little off my rocker. I don't care. I know what I want to achieve and I move to that point. It only takes one or two good people to change your whole business, right? That's a lot of fun. Okay, next thing. After you made your list, you're swinging for the fences, you got your people, you're going to expose them. I shouldn't have to say expose them. You're going to expose them to the products and you're going to expose them to the opportunity. Five times is the magical number. Statistics show that people, if you've exposed them five times to something, there's a really great likelihood that they're going to come on board. So what are we exposing them to? We're exposing them to product testimonials. Hopefully yours is the first one they hear and you tell your story and you're gonna notice with your story, you're really powerful because it's your story. There's an energy there that you, nobody can duplicate but you. So share that with people. Number two, you can expose them to business overviews, opportunity meetings. You can expose them to surveys and quizzes. You can expose them to videos, right? There's some really good videos APL goes put out. You can expose them to trainings like these on how to do the business but just expose them, get them out, and put things out in front of them. I love rapid funnel because it lets you know when things are being watched. If you're not a rapid funnel person, that's okay. Just invite people to Zooms and follow up with them, ask them what they liked about it. Remember, get your four people by exposing masses amounts of people, maybe 20 people on your list, Whoever can get to five exposures first, there's a good chance they're going to sign up. And again, you're looking for your four. And again, next thing you're going to do is put them into a system. We talked about rapid funnel. Some of you guys have teams that have websites with get started training on how to do different things. The Candy Crush, right? Candy Girls, this is their system. They do weekly calls. They do trainings. Uh, Travis works with um, Alicia and, and Sarah, and they do these trainings every week. This is a system, okay? The goal is duplication. All you want to do is duplicate until you have four managing directors. And once you have that and they help them until they have their four, once your people duplicate and they do what, exactly what you did, you're going to make a million dollars if you stay on course and continue building your business. It's that simple. I've seen it happen over and over. With that being said, I want to tell you guys, we have the most incredible product line. It's affordable. It's a category creator. It's fun for me to share this product. I want to kind of leave with my story, and I hope you can kind of feel my passion here. I have such bad acid reflux that if I eat late at night or if I eat too much, I will wake up literally at three in the morning throwing up acid out of my mouth. It's disgusting. It's never really come out, but I've always caught it. But man, I hate it. It just burns my whole esophagus. And I've had this since college, okay? When I got ice and I was like, okay, it helps with digestion. At that point, everything was in Russian, man. I didn't know what it really did, 
only that it was good for you, for your digestion. I put it by my bedside. This is actually my bedside right here, right? So it's kind of my space. And I took one out and I popped it like at 11 at night, just hoping it would work. And I'm going to tell you, man, I slept through the night and I know I should have woken up at two or three with acid. It never happened. And since this point, I've never had acid reflux if I take it. And I've forgotten once or twice, but I take it almost 90% of the time. And every time I take it, I don't get acid reflux. And I've learned to combine re, um, RLX. I combo drop at night. So it gets me relaxed and I take ice and that's my story. So I hope you could feel that. And by sharing that with you, I'm going to tell you that your story, whatever your story is, is just as powerful as my story. And like, hopefully you felt my energy. People will fear your energy with your own story. So share your story. That's the, that's the uh, theme of it. You've got a great president. We got a great company. I want to thank you for uh, for giving me the time tonight, Sarah, for being able to present this. I hope it was helpful, and I'm going to turn it over back to you. Thank you so much, Kari. That was awesome, better than I expected, as always. So thank you so much. Um, I don't know if you have a couple minutes, but I'd like to open it up. If anybody has any specific questions in regards to achieving these ranks, I want to take a few minutes to answer those questions. You guys can unmute yourselves if you do. If not, I have a couple questions. This is Anna. So one question is, does the carryover volume count in the 12,500 um, the you're bringing over for that month or do you need to have a no, new? Great question, Anna. Thanks for asking it. So Anna's asking in the group bonus, if there's extra volume on your power leg, what happens? So in our example, I think there was like 15,000. So you only need 12.5. So in this case, 2,500, I believe, if my math is good, would roll over into the next week. So to answer your question, that does roll over into the next week. It doesn't get um, taken out and it keeps rolling for the calendar year and even beyond at this point. So yes, it rolls over. So that does count towards corporate director, if you have, say there's 8,000 in one of your legs that is burnt coming over. So would you only need to get the, like the four or five in that one and then the 12, five in the other one? Yes. Okay. Well, <laughs> and well, second, yes, absolutely. Okay. And second question with the managing director, does it count if they came in as diamond and gut managing director or do they have to have the volume to count as a managing director? It's such a great question. There's a little bit of confusion in our company. It's because of the way leaders, including myself, have taught the plan. So I want to make this really clear. I really appreciate you asking this. Coming in as a diamond gives you one right in rank. And that one right, the main right is, or the main advantage is in the check match you are qualified as a managing director, meaning you can pick up five levels of check match, but that's it. That is the only advantage. You do not have the same rights and, and value as a real managing director. So if I had to choose between managing director rank and diamond, I would choose managing director. Why? The difference is the diamond came in with the $3,000 pack and has a 30% payout in the group bonus, but the managing director has that as well. Actually, no, the managing director may not have that, but what the managing director does have is structure. They've got a minimum of 12.5 in their pay lane or pay lanes. And diamonds don't have to have any structure to have that title. But if you could be both, that's even better, right? If you could be a diamond, diamond's important. Don't get me wrong, 30% payout in, in the group um, group bonus is huge. Most leaders and most companies make 20, if that, and I'm talking diamonds and other companies, we're doing 30 for life. It's incredible. But remember, after you hit diamond status, you've got to build rank. Why? And I talked about it in my APL Go Rewards overview. It's on my YouTube station or channel. There's dynamic compression in our group bonus, meaning 
that if I have six levels in my group bonus of matching, but I'm only qualified for five, that extra level is going to go above me to the next qualified high ranked person. Meaning that if I'm higher than a managing director, I'm a corporate director, I can pick up multiple levels of matching below me that the managing directors can't get. Why? Because managing directors, just like rank and status, they can only reach as deep as they can into the comp plan. But by hitting a higher rank corporate director, you can reach down in that check match and pull out level six, where managing directors and diamonds can only pull out five levels. So all those six levels, you know who's making all that money? I'm one of them because I have a higher rank than managing. I'm a, I'm a corporate director or above. So I'm pulling those six levels, those six levels that people aren't qualified for. They're only qualified for five. Corporate directors are pulling those six levels in the check match. And it's, it's huge. It's a really big payout. Hari Kathleen is messaging you in the chat. She said in the back office in the qualification button, it says 12,500 PV in lesser leg or 50,000 PV in both lanes. Question. Why did you say we need 25,000 with 12,500 in lesser lane? So if you, it's a great question. So here's why I said 25. Remember your lesser lane or lanes has to have a minimum of 12.5, okay? But you only get paid on your pay lanes. So if you have 12.5 in your lesser lane or lanes, your power line has to have at least 12.5. So if you add those together, it's a minimum of 25,000 in and volume. So I hope that makes sense. So remember, 12.5 is only half the equation. That's only your pay lanes. Your power lane has to, is the more dominant one. It has to have a minimum of that amount or greater to be your power lane. So if you really study through it and like draw them out, for me, it took me like a while to figure out the stuff when I first started doing this business. I would draw out a tree and put assigned values like I did in my slide. And you go, oh, okay, I can see why the power lane is different than the pay lane and what the volume, why the volume is the way that it is. So I hope that makes sense. She said why it does not say that in our back office. Because our back office is in Russian and we're doing our best to translate it. And I'm going to tell you this too. It's a really good question. A lot of people that work at corporate aren't in our industry. They got jobs. So they're trying to figure out, okay, I got hired by this company. And I'm going to try and figure out how to explain this. And so if you look at our back office, I just kind of chuckle at some of the stuff because it makes absolutely no sense, which is why these trains, I think, are important to clarify why the mistakes are in the back office. And remember, they're doing their best. And when you speak English to a Russian people, even if that Russian person understands English, they're only getting half of it. So please be patient and realize that we're working on these things and uh, James is working really hard right now to make the corrections in the back office. He's with Sergey in Phoenix tonight. I'll be with them in New York in two nights talking about more of this stuff. But we're slowly getting things geared toward the West and for the U.S. So I think Kathleen is saying, is it written in the compensation plan? Um, I, I, I don't know if she fully understands it. Dr. Aaron, you may want to talk with Kathleen and go over it more. So is there any other questions? No? Okay, you guys. Thank you so much, Kari, again for that. I think that this was a really important training. I know that a lot of the, there was a lot of confusion in hitting diamond and thinking that was really where we had to stop and that's where we needed to kind of accelerate to. And then we could take, put the brakes on. And I think it's really important for all of us to understand that there's a lot beyond hitting diamond. Diamond's like the first step and then from there, we really need to focus on ranks and helping our team achieve ranks. And that's re really where the money is. So thank you again, Kari. I really appreciate every time you come on here. And thank you guys all for joining us tonight. I hope you guys have a great week. And I will see you guys next Monday. Thanks, everyone. And I'm going to say this. Go Jazz. Yeah, let's go NBA. Let's go Jazz. See you guys. <laughs> Kevin says boo. <laughs> Good night.